Socratic method essentially entails a teacher calling on a student and questioning that student, and through his questioning of that student, A, humiliate the student, and B, let the rest of the class know what the correct answer is. I had a professor who was really hardcore about the Socratic method. And he'd yell at us and jump up and down, and he had a cane. He doesn't even put it down before he points into the class. He yells, Mr. Chen, please recite the facts, the procedural history, and the holding of so-and-so case. Basically, they put you in a pedestal and screw you to the wall and, you know, make you sweat in front of the whole class. You'll see people with faces turn bright red. You can, you can just literally hear the fear, the shaking of their voice when answering the question. You will feel like you are underwater and you are never, ever coming up. It was a very terrifying experience and people just sat very quietly and very still and waited for the professor to just scream out someone's name and then grill them for up to 40 minutes. It's bingo. You're trying to hide behind your computer monitor. You're trying to sit on the edge of your seat to where your head is being blocked by the person in front of you so the professor can't see you. And, and you know, maybe there's that freak of nature out there that says, oh, I hope she calls on me because I am so extremely prepared. But I know that the rest of us were just thinking, oh gosh, please let her call on somebody else. I find that it's a rush and it's fun and going head to head with a brilliant professor is unlike anything else. I personally love the Socratic method because it forces you to read every single night. It forces you to be diligent. The Socratic method is nothing but scare tactics to get you to read and get you to study. And in that way, I think it works very well. You know, I have one professor who called on someone who just flat out wasn't prepared. I you know, just said, I'm sorry, I haven't read. And you could see that it, it was almost a personal offense to that professor. I had to pass one time and it was pretty scary. Passing entails a degree of shame that even if you don't really know the answer, you probably want to give it your best shot. If you weren't prepared, you better make something up because the unacceptable answer was, oh, I haven't read today. Better that you bullshit and pass. There's, there's no bullshitting. You can't, you cannot bullshit your way through a Socratic thing. You know, you either can give a coherent answer, or you might as well just say, "I'm sorry, I just don't know." The entire point of Socrates using the Socratic method way back when was that he wouldn't ask his students answers because he didn't think he had the answers. I and mean, Socrates always said, "I don't have any answers. That's why I only ask questions." In a lot of schooling, growing up. You're told what to think, you're told what the answer is, and you memorize the answer, and then you spit it back out on a test. In law school, you're t taught how to think, how to come up with things on your own. They ask questions, they don't give answers. They change the hypothetical in the middle of it, they change the case in the middle of it, to keep giving you more and more questions. And really, if you pump out a couple of correct answers, usually they move on to the next poor sucker, because they want the person who doesn't know the answer to sweat. A professor realizes that you don't know the answer, and just says, the hell with it. I'm gonna stay on this guy and make him keep giving me wrong answers until everyone in the class realizes what the right answer is because they've heard every wrong answer. Here, here's the answer. Oh, 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 no it's not. Oh, I just changed it. Oh, it's over here. Oh, nope, sorry, changed it again on you. You're never gonna get the ball. And you go from being confident in your knowledge of the law to feeling like a schmuck. Yeah, you're gonna be wrong in front of 80 or 90 people, but if, if you're one of these people who feels like you always have to be right, you can't say something unless you're sure, the Socratic method might be a little difficult on you. Yeah, if you can't accept failure, law school isn't the place for you because you're going to lose. And you will learn more in your losing than you will ever know by winning. Ask me how many questions you want. I mean, the ones I get right will be the ones I get right, and the ones I get wrong are the ones I get wrong, and at some point, you know, you'll choose to move on someone else, and if you choose not to move on someone else, um, that's fine too, because in the end, you know, my grade is just what's on the final, so I can say whatever I want to say. Sometimes they'll be playful with it, sometimes they'll seem mean and stodgy with it. Just go with it. At first, people were maybe a little intimidated by him, but pretty soon it was, uh, it was almost funny, you know. He'd be yelling at someone, we'd be laughing. Don't worry about it. You'll get a black letter outline for that. You'll figure it out in your study group. Learn the process. Enjoy it as it goes. Hide the ball can be a lot of fun for you, too.